Hi everybody, I am so delighted to be in a position to talk to you today. Um, and our uh, webinar, our talk today is about rising uh, to meet life's challenges. And I suppose everybody start, has to start somewhere. Um, and for me, it was that feeling, everybody has to start somewhere. Um, and I think there's always a catalyst in everybody's life where you start. Um, and you should always have at your ethos the fact of doing stuff for yourself. Because it is in doing for yourself that you discover what works and what doesn't work. So a few years ago, I would have been at the stage of my life where I knew there was more to life than the life I was leading. Oh, that's so much better. Yeah. There was more to life than the life that I was leading. There was, I felt that there was actually something missing. Um, and there might be a lot of people out there that can actually relate to that. Uh, there's a sense, a feeling that you're not totally 100% in alignment. And it's actually a great place to be. It's a place where you can... Um, go and start exploring, particularly if you listen to it. So I remember the first course that I did was actually called Who Am I? And that's a fair indication of where I was in my life. Um, I wouldn't have been, this is not unique. It's not unique to many women, but it is a great place to start with. So I started exploring. Um, and I, I wanted to, do, I, I suppose I went into mind, body and spirit. So the spirit aspect of things was doing Reiki, working with angels, um, and, and all of those were great, but I still felt that it wasn't actually totally what it is that I wanted to work with. Um, meanwhile, I'd studied and I'd done reflexology and Indian head massage and things like that, and all of these things were great that I, that I could pass on the benefit for others. So I went from... Um, those sort of things, and they were great, but they still weren't 100%. And, and it was really only when I went into the NLP part of it. And the NLP is great because, um, you know the saying, when the teacher, when the pupil's ready, the teacher will appear. And that's pretty much where I was. I just found that it was absolutely amazing. Over the two years, there was... I found what was missing and that was the connection to myself. The, I gave myself the time and the space to connect to an inner guidance system, shall we say. Um, and that made a huge difference to my world. It allowed me to forgive, to let go, to see the bigger picture to be more in tune with me and who I am. So that had huge impact on my life. And basically it was the underlying principles that allowed me to get through probably the more challenging aspects of my life. Um, when we, so I'll talk about that first. So that is um, the start. Looking for connection. Um, and that really, really is important, I think, because what I was what I was looking for was connection. A connection that between me and a, a source, a universe, or whatever it is, or a god, or whatever it is that you like to put a, a word on word on it. So um I will, I have huge admiration for women. Um, I do believe that we are the greatest untapped resource. Uh, it's only now, we're only now mining our own abilities. Mining our own abilities, I like that. But we have, um, well, we are minding our own abilities, but we have um, lots of programming 
that we have to overcome. And sometimes you don't know what that is until you come up against it. Women supporting women, probably the biggest um, support you could possibly have. A woman not supporting another woman can do a huge amount of damage. Um, and I learned that to my, no, I won't say my detriment because it wasn't to my detriment, it was, but it was definitely a lesson well learned. Uh, when I was going through my um, divorce proceedings, I had um, a solicitor on board and I had picked a woman because I had felt that um, that a woman understanding another woman. And I suppose I had some clues during the whole initial connection that we had together but um, every time I every time I wanted to pull out I um, she brought up something that I felt that was fear-based um, and I felt first um, so I had a huge, huge learning experience through her. She wasn't the best person for the job. She wasn't the best person for me. Um, and while I knew it, I couldn't extricate my, I felt I couldn't extricate myself for her. Uh, she used control, manipulation, um, fear. Um, and that's what I mean about the, uh, the unhealthy aspects of, womanhood when you tune into when you are working from that part of your psyche your it is not very healthy but I had never come across that before because as well as being part of network and be part of the the women that I encountered there this was not part of the ethos so it was for me it was a great learning curve it was uncomfortable it was stressful. It had a huge impact on my life. Um, and I th the reason I'm bringing this up is not because of the circumstances, but what in fact that I learned from it. Number one, I learned to, to um, recognize controlling and manipulation, um, to see what it felt like, to know what it was like to go through. Um, and that gave me insight into into an area that I probably wouldn't have come in contact before. The other thing that I learned from her was I had felt that I wanted the need to be heard and, and it wasn't seen and heard. Um, so I I brought in the, the Law Society because she wasn't hearing me um, and I figured that that is, and that's okay. That if somebody isn't listening to you, it is okay to bring in somebody else that can either work as a buffer or as work as, as, as a, um, an in-between. It gives you breathing space um, so that you can take a step back rather than being caught up into the whole drama. So that worked. That worked well. But in my... I wanted her to know how her... Me working with her actually affected my life um, and I made several attempts to do that until I came to the light bulb mo moment and the realization that in fact do you know what she probably wasn't going to get it she wasn't in a position to uh, listen she wasn't in a position to hear um, and I came to my realization that if I didn't let go of this that I could spend my whole tr life trying to make her listen in a way that um, actually didn't, um, it was not benefiting me. So I learned the lesson of letting go. I blessed her. I knew that behind her actions were her own insecurities. And 
I didn't need to be taking those, nor did I need to be carrying them with me for the rest of my life. So they were, when it comes from a relationships point of view, and that's why I do like to help and support women that are going through separation and divorce in particular, because there are so many different aspects that come to the fore because you are the support for your family, because you are usually the person that is the sole care for all of the, um, for all of your children. And I had three children that you had to, um, you also had an experience that you were going through. Um, and I didn't really have any support when I was going through this. And I must say, I found it hugely challenging. Um, I had to take time out to recover, to rediscover who I was, um, and to allow myself to be free of the experience because I didn't need to be holding on to it. 